Algebra 2, state sample question number 18. If A, B, and C are all positive real numbers, it's important that they're positive there, uh, which graph could represent the sketch of the graph of P of X? Which of these four graphs? This is a multiple choice question. And we want to know which of these graphs could match this. Uh, a couple of things to note here. And notice that all four of these are odd degree. All are odd degree. And how can we determine that? And the way we determine even or odd degree is if the arrows are pointing in the same direction or opposite direction. See how one's pointing up, one's pointing down. One's pointing down, one's pointing up. Uh, here we got uh, one up, one down. One up, one down. So these are all odd degree functions because they're pointing in opposite directions. Even degree functions are either both pointing up or both pointing down. Um, and so we could determine that. And, and I see that as the case here because I have x to the first here and x to the second there. So this is actually a degree 3 uh, uh, graph here. So that's one thing. Now, are, are either of them odd functions there? They're all odd degree, but are they odd functions? And the answer is no. None of them are centered about the origin. An odd function means if I spin it upside down with respect to the point of rotation being the origin, 0, 0, the graph looks exactly the same. But if you flip this graph upside down about the origin, uh, it does not look exactly the same. Um, you know, I could do a quick little sketch of that. Oh, this is pretty terrible, but I'll show you what I mean. That if I then take this, let's see if I, I might need to, is that all going to move together? No, I might have to group those two things together real quick. If I group this together um, and then flip it upside down, I see that it, it doesn't look exactly the same. It doesn't line up perfectly. So that, that tells me that it is not um, an odd function. It is odd degree, but not an odd function. An even function has the y-axis symmetry. You know, it looks like a mirror image with respect to the y-axis being the mirror. So neither of these are even or odd functions, but they're odd degrees. Uh, next, the thing that stands out when I look at this whole thing here is first we have a negative a, and this is what's called a constant. Um, it's not like an x plus or minus something. It's like negative 2, negative 3. And they, yes, they tell you that a is a positive number, but it's negative that. Like a could be 2, so this is negative 2. And so the fact that there's a negative uh, in front of the graph means that the graph is upside down. And it means it's been reflected over the x-axis, and it is ending down. So negative graphs end down. That means the right arrow has got to be pointing down. So that one's pointing down. This one is wrong. This would be a positive graph pointing up. This one is pointing down, and this one is wrong. This would be a positive graph pointing up. So just that little negative sign right there ruled out half of our choices. Then x plus b is a factor. Now if x plus b is a factor, that means that x equals negative b is a 0 or a root. So the graph's got to cross at negative b. It does. It's got to cross at negative b. It does not. So here's my answer right here. Um, and that's all you really have to do, but we could go further. This x squared minus 2cx plus c, you've got to recognize that as a pattern. It comes from a binomial squared. And that's going to be x minus c. And that comes, because remember when we do a binomial squared, we square the front, times each other doubled, and square the back. And so this x minus c squared tells me I had a second root of x equals positive c, and it has a multiplicity of 2. And what that means is at c, it is not a crossing root. It's tangent to the x-axis. It's what I like to call a bouncing root. So negative v is multiplicity 1, so it's crossing, but at c, it's bouncing. So that, that was uh, how we could solve this question right here. But it could be done a lot of, largely just by it's negative, and, and we need a negative b, 0. All right, I'm going to move on, and in this same video, do number 19. Which equation represents a parabola with a focus and directrix of y equals 2? So again, this is multiple choice, and whenever I'm doing the equation of a parabola from focus and directrix, I like to draw a sketch, a very rough sketch. Uh, y equals 2 would be, let's say there, that's y equals 2. And the point 0, 4, so on the y-axis, 0, that was 2, so... Here we go, this would be 4. So 0, 4. 
And then the first thing I like to do is determine how far apart are the focus and directrix. And it's going to be the distance in the y values here because it's a normal parabola. If it was a sideways parabola, it would be the distances in the x values. But this is a, a basic parabola, meaning it's x squared. The distance between 0, 4, and y equals 2 is 2. And so the distance between the y values of 2 and 4 is 2. So here's crossing the axis at 2, here's crossing the axis at 4. It's a distance of 2. The vertex, which we want to find first, is right smack in the middle of these. And so if these have a distance of 4, that means a distance of 1 from each of them, right in the middle, is the vertex, which is going to be the point 0, 3. It's going to have the same x value as the focus, because it's lined up with the focus, but it's going to be halfway between the y values of the directrix. You could always add them up, divide by 2. 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. But sometimes you could kind of just start between 2 and 4 is 3. So the vertex is 0, 3, and then we have a p value. And p is the distance between vertex and focus. And so the distance between the vertex and the focus. The distance between the focus and the directrix was 2, so that means the distance between the vertex and the focus is 1. So this has a vertex of 0, 3, and a p-value of 1. Now p is not just the distance between the focus and uh, vertex, it's also the distance between the um, vertex and directrix. I'm sorry, this picture is a little tiny here. Uh, but it's distance of 1. It's half the distance, or you can think of it as half the distance between focus and directrix. Um, so, a couple ways to figure that out. Now, once you have your vertex and how far it is from the focus and the directrix, we could use a formula that's not given to you, and that's really important that this formula is not given to you. Um, so what that really means is you need to memorize it yourself. It's something that I would personally add onto the reference sheet. You know, before I start the test, I would go rip, tear out my reference sheet from the back, and I would write this formula uh, in addition to it. So I'd have it memorized for the day of the test. And the formula is going to make this question a lot easier, because there's another way to do this, but the formula really does help. It is x minus h squared equals 4p parentheses y minus k, where h and k are your vertex x and y values, and p is the distance between the vertex and focus, or half the distance between the focus and direction. So in this case, when I substitute here, it's going to be x minus the x value of the vertex is 0 squared, and 4 times p, which we determined to be 1, how far apart the vertex is from each of the, for the uh, focus and directrix, times y minus the y value of the vertex 3. And then when we clean this up a little bit, uh, x now if this was x minus 4 squared, I would do the binomial squared, x squared minus 8x plus 16 kind of thing. But x minus 0 is just x squared, um, because x minus 0 is nothing. And then 4 times 1 is 4, but I'm going to distribute that into the y minus 3 to get 4y minus 12. It's 4 times negative 3. And then lastly, we just need to solve for y. See how these are all y equals parabolas, right? So to get y alone, I'm first going to add 12. And then lastly, I'm going to divide by 4. And dividing x squared by 4 is, you know, 1 fourth x squared. And divided 12 by 4 is 3. And we always divide everything on both sides when we divide. So that's my answer. Uh, a fourth x squared plus 3. And a fourth x squared is the same thing as x squared over 4, because that's 1 x squared over 4. And so my answer is choice 4. So these are two very important questions because graph structure it could come up a lot of different ways, talking about odd and even degrees, odd and even functions, the end behavior where positive ends up, negative ends down, um, seeing that a root x plus b, uh, a factor x plus b means that a root, so here's a factor, and that, so that means that the root or zero, sometimes it's called is x equals negative b, Recognizing the pattern of a binomial square, knowing that's when it's negated, it's it's you know ending down. All, all that graph structure is real important. Uh, the multiplicity 
uh, bouncing roots versus the crossing roots, even multiplicity. Um, and then the uh, deter determinant of vertex, smack in the middle here, the, the distance between that vertex and things, and then this really important formula that you're going to have to memorize to make this question easier for you. Um, so that's 18 and 19. See you.